Hey guys, welcome to Clunkers and Classics. Uh, this video we're going to go over, I got a bunch of comments about uh, show us all your cars and and I know probably the best way to do that, I always thought about doing one, was to be wa to wash them all up and drive them and start them and well these cars sit around and and uh, the batteries go dead, I'd have to boost them all and my booster pack is supposed to be good for 60 starts but it's good for about two <laughs> then you got to recharge it so it would take a couple of days to get all these batteries charged and uh, do all that so we're gonna just gonna do a little quick walk around type thing so this is the 68 Chevelle Nomad station wagon if you haven't seen the uh, video set on it there's what 75 76 videos on it uh, we're gonna go on one test ride before hot rod power tour I'm gonna take that on this uh, that this year okay so uh ls swapped was a total basket case sitting in a field for 30 something years just a real rust bucket i restored it all it took me almost a year about a year off and on okay so there's a video set on that it's my uh 1970 le mans sport i traded an old rusty 67 chevelle for this it was supposed to be completely restored, rebuilt, new, you know, uh, great interior. Uh, and then it was donated to a cancer for kids auction or something like that. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, donated and then raffled off. So an old man had won the raffle, drove it once, and it sat in his garage for two years. And the guy I bought it or traded for uh had started driving it to uh car shows and stuff cars and coffee type things there and but he wanted all his buddies had 60 or chevelles he wanted a 67 chevelle so bad and i had one that was a uh, pretty rough had some good points nice interior but it was all rotted underneath uh i think the guy i got it from said he thinks it was in hurricane katrina buried in salt water because all the floors and everything were rotted. Now I told the guy that, and plus it had been all bondoed up and red primer. It just looked. Anyway, uh, it's my 77 Corvette. Uh, I, my memories on Facebook just popped up. I painted it four years ago. Now these cars are all going to be dusty because I'm bordered by three dirt roads. Uh, took me a couple years on and off to get all this back in good running driving condition uh, I traded a lot of work body and paint work on two cars to get this ten thousand dollars value of labor and it was supposed to have been all ready to go turnkey no it was barely turnkey the guy had the, the uh, choke and everything completely out of the carburetor a little flapper thing out of the carburetor was gone you could barely start it once it warmed up, it was okay, but man, nothing worked on it. The headlights didn't work, just had wiring problems. Uh, it had been previously wrecked, and they didn't do a very good job. It was missing the rebar in the front. Anyway, I had to get a parts car. Luckily, I found one to rebuild this. Anyway, it doesn't need anything, really. Uh, that's all, all done. I won't spend a whole lot of time on these cars. I don't know how... Long the we got about 20 something cars to go through okay the 78 aspen rt i bought a pair of these i'll show you the other one in a little while they're both identical white with uh stripes they're both rts real rts this is a real rt with the 360 58 police interceptor motor uh sat sat in a junkyard since 1987 and I bought the pair, the pair from the guy, from this guy, and uh, restored this one. Still got the other one. I don't know if I'll ever restore it. Probably not, because they're not worth a whole lot. But I wanted to get at least one done with all the good parts. Plus, I got two parts cars. I'll show you here in a little while. That <laughs> out of, so I, I built it pretty cheap because I had all these parts and everything. And I bought the Phoenix graphics 
it looks really good guys but it's just so dirty it's gloss black real shiny with flat black hood 82 El Camino uh, I had a $500 97 Camaro Camaro body wise and interior was in pretty good shape but it didn't run spark plugs were laying on the firewall the guy didn't know he just bought it like that from an auction and was sitting in front of his front lawn as an ornament he's like oh, I gotta get rid of it so I gave him 500 for it so I put it up for 1500 or trade and this guy traded me this El Camino he just rebuilt the motor interiors real nice uh, body was okay on it needed to be stripped down and had a bunch of those old lacquer check looking stuff it was a is a conquista uh, two-tone brown and brown and beige anyway I uh, stripped her down painted it goldish and black runs and drives great a few little minor things that I'd like to do to it okay my 69 Chevelle uh, complete basket case I traded a guy a, a paint job I painted his truck and he traded me this and it was just really completely taken apart body off the frame in pieces missing a ton of ton of stuff no interior missing the header panel missing bumpers just missing just a real basket case luckily I found a parts car from my local junkyard uh, didn't have a lot of good parts on it but did have bumpers and the header panel and the major parts that I needed so anyway I built this up uh, doesn't really need anything it's a good running driving car and of course it had no drivetrain in it I had a parts Corvette that I bought for the black one I just showed you it had a good drivetrain in it and I put the drivetrain in this one so it's got a 350 vet motor in it uh, the 72 Nova I got the complete playlist start to finish on on this one uh, bought it with motor sitting here LT1 and transmission it's old 90 style uh, LT1 the, the distributor in the front Opta Spark but just sitting in there I never had it hooked up wasn't wired up wasn't motor mounts in it or nothing it was just sitting in there plopped in there tucked away in his garage for years and he never did nothing with it completely basket case too uh, so I did find a four-door parts car with a good running six-cylinder power glide I put that in there keep it cheap gonna sell the LT1 engine transmission uh, it's still up for sale I get calls on it every week but nobody ever shows up redid all the interior bought all new interior panels carpet stuff like that for it don't have a lot into it 5200 bucks into it it's in uh, real nice shape so yeah it runs and drives I like to keep all my cars where I could at any minute just you know charge the battery and then uh, put some gas in it hop in it and drive them pretty much anywhere trouble free uh, they're mostly all like that some of them like the Aspen it runs great and drives great but it I never replaced all the hoses and belts and well I may have I may have replaced some of that I'd like to I like I usually do that on all my restorations but I didn't go overboard on the Aspen RT okay so yeah another reason I'll do this video is because I just got all the couple of trees cut down over here uh, grass cut uh, so everything's kind of neat without the weeds growing around it other than this eye rock so I'm right in the middle of doing this avalanche here we got everything fixed on it fix and do the body work video on the body work and then video on the paint other than that it's in great shape now because I've had a rebuilt transmission put in it and a bunch of little stuff fixed okay this will be a future project 85 I rock uh, it's got a lot of good points good body never been wrecked no rust stuff like that uh, it just needs some major stuff that I don't have like a wiring harness uh, probably gonna swap the fuel tank out stuff like that some interior pieces are missing it needs a lot of interior work dash is all busted up I can fix that but 
anyway there's going to be a future project i'll get to it one day but it's not worth a lot of money fixed up see so I, i'm in no rush it's not a big money maker i'll probably keep it i used to have a lot of these cars back in the day i wish i'd kept one of them but okay just my this is my daily driver for, well, i've had this truck for like 10 years 99 silverado uh great truck ac stopped working on it okay let's come over here i got two of these jeeps this is the both four-wheel drive this is the the v8 one i've taken this colorado many times great jeep uh this is my freebie car uh, I drive this quite a bit everything works on it i have an ad that i buy put out by junk cars abandoned cars and sure enough i a woman called me up and says come take it away didn't really need anything her brother brother-in-law abandoned it at their property and moved to japan then just called up four years later and says i'm not moving back so do what you want with the car so she gave it to me of course it didn't start battery was dead and everything but took minor work some tires and i've been driving it for about three years now okay the el camino got a bunch of videos on it sitting for 20 something years got her running had to put a drive shaft in it get it driving runs drives uh it's in pretty good shape but it needs some interior work we're going to get to that and finish it off uh okay my 85 corvette I t another one i took in in trade i painted a guy's truck for a 57 55 to 57 chevy four-door that was completely gutted no interior no uh drivetrain nothing good body though and it had been inside so there's no rust no no rust on the floor or anything but as a four-door, didn't have the parts, didn't want to round up the parts. Uh, but I traded it for him because I knew it had some value, so I put it up for five grand. And a guy traded me this Corvette for, for the shell of the 57 four-door. And he just loved it, and he just, wanted, just was going to start right away fixing up the four-door. But it's had problems, the, a rod bent in it trying to start it, so I, I've since then put another motor in it. Uh, it was white, I painted it red twice. Anyway, my 74 GTO, bought this as a complete basket case. You can probably see a theme here where I'll buy these cars that are in really rough shape. Uh, this was way down in Houston on uh, Craigslist or a Pontiac group that I belonged to for 1500 bucks and it was completely torn apart. Guy had the motor on a stand completely torn down, the original 350. But I know Pontiacs, uh, Pontiac engines are all the same, same size and weight. Whether you get a 326, a 350, a 389, a 400, 421, 428, 455, they're all the same. So you can plop a, it's not like a Chevy small block and big block where you got to do a lot of screwing around trying to fit one in a car that it didn't come with the four, I, I had I still have the parts car down there it was a 70 1970 Catalina convertible uh, really rough shape I got that in a trade anyway it had a good run in 455 and that's what's in this instead of rebuilding that guy's old 350 low horsepower junk uh, made out like abandoned on this because he he bought about i don't know three thousand dollars worth of new engine parts to have a de-stroked engine and uh i put that on my pontiac group for half price 1500 is all new in the boxes and i sold that I, I basically got the money back off this i got it for free paid 1500 sold 1500 in parts i had to well i I got fifteen hundred all together. I fifteen hundred for the parts. The guy gave me because he was done with working on cars. So uh, I got his motor hoist and his uh, engine stand. Sold all that for fifteen hundred. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, ninety percent done. It just needs a little 
They could use new door panels, which are 500 bucks. Only one place makes it. Same with the headliner, the one-piece plastic headliner, 500 bucks. I, d I just can't justify putting another grand into it now. I uh, got the factory buckets that were probably redone at one time. The factory cool shifter, but that's not a factory console. I think I bought a dash or dash cover for it a while back. It's been been a few years since I restored this. There should be a couple little videos of this on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I should have probably replaced that back seat. It was just had some rips, and I put some white duct tape on there. Anyway, it's about you know 80, 90 percent done. Runs and drives and everything. Okay, my little '78 Nova, little six banger. Uh, bought it for 500 bucks off some crackhead on Craigslist, and I don't know where he got it from, but it had a title. But he like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's supposed to run. I said, well, it doesn't run. And I'm going to assume that it's shot. Uh, it was brown. Interior was shot. Old bench seat that was just all ripped and torn. But I lucked out. I got it home. And uh, sure enough, she started up. Uh, oh, it had a transmission leak. So I got the transmission leak fixed. Wasn't nothing major. And uh, tune up on the engine. And it runs great. Took it on power tour last year. I haven't done nothing mechanically to it drive train wise you know I, I think i'd probably put on new brakes and uh shocks and stuff like that i'll have to go through this it's got a complete playlist though so yeah it's in great shape and it's a six banger but it's okay i like them okay so yeah i don't have very much money into this at all uh this is my 99 yeah 99 uh Camaro it's just a v6 five speed I've had it for over 20 years it's only got 58,000 original miles on it uh, I put the molded DSS hood on it but uh, this is why I didn't do the SS the uh, molded hood on the uh, Nomad because the fiberglass cracks no matter what you do to it uh, I don't like clear because here's a clear peeling but this is all 10 15 years old so Okay, so, uh, and I like the rear louvers on it and the wing. Uh, I drove it for a long time. Didn't put a lot of miles on it, but I, I love this car. I, I love them all. Uh, this one I bought a few years ago off Craigslist because I bought another a 99 Camaro. Uh, it's a parts car over there, and the guy could, could, couldn't get it started. Only had 120,000 miles on it could not no matter what he tried he couldn't get it started crank over wouldn't fire i got it for like 200 bucks i couldn't believe it so after a lot of screwing around <laughs> probably repeating what he did uh it was a cam camera crank sensor crank sensor in the bottom and that was it put a crank sensor in it boom it fired right up purred like a kit and that thing run perfect and he had told me that it had run perfect, and a few people that I knew uh, that had known the car had told me it run perfect and everything too. So I kind of took the guy's word for it, but then again, I only paid 200 bucks for it. So uh, anyway, lucked out. <coughs> so I found this. So I used to build these cars, Camaros and Firebirds back in the day. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape. The only problem is the hood's all faded out clears all peeling but the interior is pretty good uh, and all that now it had a high, high miles on it 100 and 175,000 but the motor was knocking so I said perfect I got the perfect motor for that so I bought it for a couple hundred bucks like I don't know 400 500 and uh, put that motor from that Camaro into this it runs perfect drives perfect i use a daily driver for a couple years cold ac put new tires on it although one's going flat uh great car uh again it's the v6 these v6 is 3.8 3800 series uh in these year this style camaro firebirds they're 200 horsepower factory so they're pretty good uh I got like, quite a bit of power and the gas mileage is phenomenal it, it gets like 30 I think it's rated at 
29 for an automatic, 30 miles to the gallon uh, for a, a five-speed, and they get every bit of it. Like I said, I've, I've, I've had more, too. I used to build these, and uh, the gas mileage is just phenomenal, like 30 miles to the gallon. You just can't beat it. Okay. Okay. Oh, i got a few more around there, but there's the other Aspen. I doubt I'll ever fix it. It's just a basket case. Uh, I got some parts to fix it. This was a four-door parts car. Cut some floor out. Cut some. Use the fender in the front end for the for the one I fixed up. Uh, there's another parts car too. Sold a lot of parts off this and cut the whole floor out for the other one. Three sections of floor from that one, and I cut one section of floor out of this one. It was a little bit rusty, and then I found out that these all the way up to 87 is the same floor. So these floors were mint, so I cut the rest of the floor out of this one and put it in the black one. And yeah, the, the, the black one I restored was exactly like the same stripe, same color, but I like black and uh, the maroon and red and stuff stripes. So uh, that's what I painted it with. Okay, these two... Long story on this 2012 Equinox, but we're gonna fix that up. It's supposed to have been a flip car. Uh, same with this one. I bought this for 300 bucks. The the, car, the value of this is just through the roof. It's like friggin' 13,000 poor condition, 20,000 good condition, 35,000 excellent condition. Uh, it runs and drives great, but it's got a bad hesitation to it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I screwed around with everything. Guy I bought it from thought it was the fuel tank with bad gas, but it wasn't that. It's got a new fuel pump and stuff on it. It's getting fuel, just something something to do with uh, hesitation. Anyway, we're going to get around to that. I need to get rid of it. I have no love for that. Okay, I think that was about all of them. Now, the rest of these cars around here are just junk, except for like that. Little SUV over there needs a transmission. Debating whether to put a transmission in that one. The guy that I did the uh, got that did the uh, Avalanche. He, he doesn't do them, even though it's a GM 4L30E. He only does a 4L60E and 700R4. The rest of these cars way over here, they're all just junk being parted out. Uh, I scrapped 48 of them last year. I hated to because I don't really like crushing cars, but. Uh, Okay, there's my other Jeep here, same as the other one. Way lower mileage, and it, it's just got the straight six. Cold AC, runs and drives great, just like a new Jeep. This one was a flip car. I took it in and trade um, for some BMW parts. And I said the transmission's out in it. Sure enough, it was out. And it's the CVT transmission. Don't ever buy one. These trans that's what put Nissan name from the top of the list, top of the heap to the to the bottom of the shit pile. So they keep screwing around putting these CVT transmissions in there, not warranting them or not warranting them very long, then get sued and up the warranty a little bit. But the internet is just full of bad comments. I'll never buy another Nissan again. So this is why these friggin' Ultimas. So I found a transmission after it's a long story with a lot of screwing around we got it in there but it, it it i can't even remember i haven't even driven it for a couple of years it shifts if you manually shift it it's an automatic you're going to manually shift it to go through the gears i think i think that's what it is nothing too major but i just don't feel safe selling it i was just going to keep it in case i sold the ford fusion and uh, i just drive this one as a you know cold AC newer car for screwing around with and if I didn't mention this 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 is a 2013 Ford Fusion one I got for free 2.0 little teeny four-cylinder with a turbo 245 horsepower and believe me it'll snap your neck it's pretty damn fast you wouldn't think it but they're faster than half the you know 70s 350s I got that are 200 horsepower or 180 horsepower so it's pretty fast <laughs> uh, 
This one we're going to do next, probably after the avalanche. Long story, I won't get a whole, oh, wait for the video for that. Little 94 step side. Uh, bought it as a roller, got an engine transmission in it, but it still needs a lot of work. A lot of screwing around, paint work. Uh, I'll go over that on another video, but that'll be next. After the avalanche. And then there's my workhorse here. That's what I haul all, the, all my cars with when I buy cars. Haul, it's hauled hundreds of cars. My, my three-quarter ton uh, 2004 in a trailer. I bought the trailer brand new. 20 foot, 23, 2300 bucks. So when you see these guys buying their trailers for seven or eight grand, they're getting screwed. They got to have the tilt. Give me, give me another five grand for a tilt. Dumb, 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 dumb. Uh, <coughs> great truck. I've had it for about six, seven years. Flawless. No, absolutely no problems with it. I bought it for twenty three hundred off Craigslist. As an old uh, water company truck, went around, it, read the meters and stuff. Okay. Uh, 2001 Silverado decided I hated to but I turned it into a parts truck for the Nomad That's the one I bought at the auction probably won't be restored. I Figured the parts would go quick on this. I had it advertised. I've had people wanting the doors the bed Dash stuff off of it. Nobody's shown up typical flakes 99.9% .9 of the people out there That call for parts. They never show up never call you back uh, it's Okay, uh, this one Still haven't heard from Mark Probably just gonna be a parts car great drivetrain in it uh, Don't know yet though uh, I don't know what's up with art, but yeah, I'm thinking more and more he doesn't want to fix his car up So anyway guys, I think that's about it. Like I said the rest are junk. I got some campers and stuff I'm keeping this big this big uh, 20, I don't know what it is, 26 foot uh, fifth wheel is in good shape. Well, it was in good shape. I had to repair some of the roof was leaking, but slide out. Everything else works. AC, all the water, heat systems, stuff like that. I bought a $300 Ford Taurus that was sideswiped, and I had a Taurus parts car. This is about six years ago. And all I did was swap over, I think, the fender, the doors, or something. Painted the whole thing white and put it up for trade. Like, and I, at this point, I only had like 500 bucks in it. So this guy uh, traded me this camper for that Taurus. So, uh, yeah, I'm just keeping that one. Okay. And like I said, the rest of these are just pretty much just junk parts cars. Uh, we got three and a half acres here. Still lots of room. Uh, I'm gonna get get into more of buying more junk cars here, probably in a little bit. But probably once I come back from Power Tour. Uh, okay, so I think that's about it. That's the uh, the fleet update. And. Uh, Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see y'all next video.